Here we've arrived at complex matrices. Just when you thought we were all done with matrices, here come matrices again, except with complex numbers. Just as a little review of what a complex number is. A complex number is written in the form of A plus BI. So A is the real part, and B is the imaginary part, or the non-real part. So you can actually graph complex numbers as vectors in the form of, you know, AB or XY, whatever you want to think of it. So suppose you had the complex number 2 plus 4i. You could set up a complex plane where this is your real axis and this is your imaginary axis. And this vector then is 2 on the real axis, 4 on the imaginary axis. And so maybe the vector 2 plus 4i looks like that graphed on the complex plane. All right, you can take two vectors and add them together. So if you have 2 plus 4i, and then suppose you want to add to that 3 minus 2i, where is 3 minus 2i? It's 3 on the real axis, down 2 on the imaginary axis. All right, what happens when you add those two vectors together? 2 plus 3 is 5, 4 minus 2 is 2, so you end up with 5 plus 2i. So 5 plus 2i might look like that. So that might be the sum of those vectors. Not surprising, right? We've added vectors before, and there was a resultant in, of adding those two vectors. Well, there it is when you're using vectors in the complex plane. All right, how do matrices work in complex numbers the same way as they do in, uh, in real numbers, except uh, there's a couple of other little things get thrown in there too. So suppose I've got a matrix A with complex entries that automatically makes it a complex matrix. Okay, so there's matrix A. If I want to multiply it by 2, then I just take all the entries and multiply it by 2. So I get 8, I get 2i, I get 6 plus 2i, and I get negative 2. I right, suppose I have matrix B over here that is 3, 1 plus i, negative 2, and 1. If I want to add A plus B, then I still add it term by term, right? So 4 plus 3 is 7. That goes in row 1, column 1. i and 1 plus i is 1 plus 2i. That goes in row 1, column 2. 3 plus i and negative 2 gives me 1 plus i. And then negative 1 plus 1 gives me 0. So I can take the sum of those two matrices, add them together. Right, what if I want the determinant of a complex matrix? Well, let's look at matrix A. I want the determinant of matrix A. The operation is the same. The only thing you have to do is remember a little bit about complex numbers. So the determinant is going to be 4 times negative 1 minus i times 3 plus i. Right? So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 minus i times 3 is 3i. i times i is i squared. Now, if you remember complex numbers, the i is equal to the square root of negative 1. i squared, then, is equal to negative 1. i to the third is equal to negative i. And i to the fourth is just i squared squared, which gets you back to 1. After that, it just repeats in that order. So i to the fifth is the same thing as i. i to the sixth is the same thing as i squared, which is negative 1, and so forth. So when you answer, you shouldn't answer with any powers of i greater than 1. Right? If it's an i squared, turn it into a real number. If it's an i to the third, turn it into a negative i. If it's an i to the fourth, again, turn it into a real number. Right? So that means that I'm going to get negative 4 minus 3i minus i squared. But i squared is negative 1. So the determinant of matrix A is going to be negative 4 minus a negative 1. So negative 3 minus 3i. So now you're going to get non-real determinants. Great. That also means then you can multiply matrices that have complex entries. You can find inverses of matrices that have complex entries. What if I wanted to find the inverse of matrix A? Okay, so matrix A inverse is going to be 1 over the determinant of A times, 
And then how do we find an inverse? We switch the one diagonal so we get a negative one and a four, and we negate the other two. So we have a negative i and a negative three minus i. Okay. We can leave it like that, or we can divide through and simplify. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit more about dividing through and simplifying in a minute. Right. What if I want to find a product of two matrices? Okay. If I want to find the product of two matrices, I multiply them together just like before. So let's take that matrix A that I had up top, 4i, 3 plus i, and negative 1, and multiply it by the matrix B that I had, which was 3, 1 plus i, negative 2, 1. So I'm multiplying a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 2. This should be good. So I get 4 times 3 is 12, negative 2 times i, negative 2i. Okay, now let's do row one by column two. This will give me four plus four i, and then i times one is another i. All right down the bottom, three plus i times three is going to give me nine plus three i. All right, that's the first entries, and then negative one times negative two will give me plus 2, and now do the last ones. I'm going to write it out like this first. 3 plus i times 1 plus i minus 1. Down the bottom here, we're going to have to FOIL that out. So 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times i is 3i, plus another i gives me 4i, and then i times i is i squared. Well, instead of i squared, I'm going to write negative 1. Okay, and then carry this guy down here. That's another minus 1. So 3 minus 1 minus 1 is just 1 plus 4i. All right, we should simplify that. Try to write everything in a plus bi form. So the top one is already done for me. All right? 12 minus 2i. On the top right, I get 4 plus 5i. Down the bottom, I get 11 plus 3i. And then down the bottom right, I get 1 plus 4i. Okay, so I can take the product of two matrices, just like I do with real number terms. The only thing you've got to remember is the powers of i and then combining like terms. All right, there is such a thing in complex numbers as the complex conjugate. And you might have seen this in a previous course. You may have not used the same notation that I'm going to use. So for a complex conjugate. So suppose I write my complex number like this, z equals 2 plus 4i. Then the complex conjugate gets that little bar over the top of it, and it retains the same real part, but the non-real part changes sign. The idea is if I take a complex number multiplied by the complex conjugate, I end up with a real number. And you'll see what happens is a difference of squares pattern. So in this case, 2 plus 4i is over here. 2 minus 4i over there. When I FOIL it, 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 8i plus 8i gives me 0. And then minus 16i squared. Right? So 4 minus 16 times negative 1 will give me 4 plus 16, which is 20. How is that helpful? Well, suppose I was trying to simplify something, right? And if you go back to the idea of that matrix that I had up on top, we were dividing by something that had an imaginary. So we had like a 3 minus 3i or something on the bottom. Suppose I had 3 over 2 plus 4i, right? And my goal was to rationalize the denominator. Then what I would do is I would multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate. So I would have 3 times 2 minus 4i over 2 plus 4i times 2 minus 4i. So on the top, 3 times 2 is 6 minus 12i. I'm going to steal my answer from the previous problem, right? It's just going to give me a 20. Well, I can divide top and bottom by 2. That'll give me a 3 minus 6i over 10. And then if I really want to write it in A plus B I form, I can write it as 3 over 10 
minus 6 over 10 actually simplifies again to 3 fifths. So now I've written an A plus BI form, and I don't have any imaginary numbers in the denominator. Sometimes when I go to simplify these things, it might be nice to do it that way. All right, so let's say I want to find the inverse. Let's try another problem where I have to find the inverse of a matrix that is in imaginary form or complex form. All right, so here's my matrix A as 5, 2i, 3 minus i, i. And my goal is to find A inverse. Well, the first thing is, does A inverse exist? I'll get the determinant of A is equal to 5 times i minus 2i times 3 minus i. So 5i minus 6i minus minus gives me a plus 2i squared. So 5i minus 6i is negative i. That i squared is negative 1. So negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So negative 2 minus i is the determinant of matrix A. All right. So the determinant is not 0. Good. Now how do I find the inverse? Well, I'll go back to our inverse rules that we had from earlier in the course. What do we do? We start with 1 over the determinant. So I get 1 over the determinant, negative 2 minus i. And then I flip, right? That becomes an i. That becomes a 5. And I flip signs. So negative 2i up here and negative 3 plus i over there. What's going to happen is when I go to divide through, I'm going to end up with a sort of complex set of answers. Let's see what it looks like. I'll end up with i over negative 2 minus i. I'll end up with negative 2i over negative 2 minus i. I'll end up with negative 3 plus i over negative 2 minus i. And then I'll end up with 5 over negative 2 minus i. Maybe it would be helpful if I multiplied everything inside and outside by the complex conjugate of what's on the bottom there. And that will help me to get rid of some of those fractions. I could do that here, but let's try doing it when it was on the outside. All right, so what if I took that over there and I left the 1 over negative 2 minus i, and then I multiplied on the outside by 1 over negative 2 plus i, and then took each term on the inside and multiplied it by negative 2 plus i. So I'm going to take my i and multiply it by negative 2 plus i. I'm going to take the negative 2i and multiply it by negative 2 plus i. I'm going to take the negative 3 plus i this down here and multiply it by negative 2 plus i. And then I'm going to take the 5 that was over here and multiply it by negative 2 plus i. In other words, I've multiplied everything on the inside by negative 2 plus i. And then at the end, I've divided by negative 2 plus i. The advantage on the outside here, if I take these two things and multiply them, I'll get 1 over negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Minus 2i plus 2i zeroes out. Minus i squared, which will give me 1 over 4 minus a negative 1. The outside number now is just 1 fifth. Okay, so 1 fifth. What do I get on the top? Negative 2i plus i squared. Over here, I get positive 4i minus 2i squared. Down the bottom, I get 6 minus 3i minus 2i, which is minus 5i, 
plus i squared. And over here, I get negative 10 plus 5i. And now all of a sudden, it's starting to look a whole lot better. I turn all those i squares into negative ones. And so I get one fifth times negative one minus two i. Over here, negative two times negative one will give me positive two. So two plus four i. Down the bottom, six minus one will give me five. And over here, I'll get negative 10 plus 5i. So that's A inverse. The only other thing I could do if I wanted to is I could divide everything on the inside by 5, and that will simplify the bottom row, but it will make the top row messier. So I think at this point, I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, we'll tackle the linear combinations in the next video.